is going on guys? Welcome back or welcome to my channel. I'm Mike Stallone and today I'm going to be doing a beginner's review on what I like, all the pros and the cons of this, whether I think that it's worth the money and what I use it for and what I recommend it for. But let's jump right into this review because this is an amazing camera. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do a review on this camera is because there's been a lot of debate lately of uh, whether this camera is still relevant today, especially with the new GoPro Hero 8 that's out. And let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Is it still relevant, uh, especially after, after the review, if you've heard of these cameras, if you haven't. So as always with my reviews, the first thing that I wanted to start out with is the price of this camera. So right now on Amazon, you can actually get this camera for $279.99. That comes with two batteries and an SD card, which I think is an amazing value for $280, something that's under $300. You get two batteries and a SD card. So it's a great way to start you, start you out or a great addition to your fleet of cameras if you already have a couple. So the second thing that I wanted to go over is the features that I like about this camera. So I'm not gonna go over every feature. I'm gonna just give you guys the ones that I think that are important to know as a buyer, uh, especially a beginner buyer. So the first thing that it does, it shoots in hyper smooth. It has hyper smooth stability. So if you watch any of my other videos, you can see that this camera works so well at taking out all the bumps. I know that the GoPro Hero 8 does it a little bit better, but this is still fantastic. If you take a look at some of my other videos, it really takes away a lot of the edge to the video, a lot of the choppiness. So one of the features that I think that is important to know. It shoots slow-mo, eight times slower uh, in 1080p, which is really cool, the fact that it's still high def. Uh, the next feature that I really like is that it has a time warp Another really cool feature that it has, and it's basically like a time lapse, but it makes it look more like a video because it's really just a sped up video rather than the choppy pictures, like one picture every three seconds merged together. The time warps do look really cool. The other feature that I really like about this camera is that it comes with a really durable case and it gives you a little bit extra confidence when using this, especially how I use these cameras. And the fact that it's waterproof up to 33 feet. I mean, I don't know when I'm ever gonna go 33 feet underwater, but it just, it's that extra confidence with the camera. And the last feature that I think it's useful for you guys to know is this one does have a GPS. So if you're looking for a camera to overlay speed on there or miles per hour or how, whatever you're looking to with GPS, this camera has that. So let's jump right into the pros, what I love about this camera. The first thing I wanted to talk about is this is my go-to camera every single time for my slow-mos. Before this, I was using my phone and let's be honest, there's not a really comparison between a phone and a GoPro slow-mo. Yeah, it is an amazing camera when it comes to that. It's such high quality and I usually slow my videos down to about 15% but there are, and that has no chop in it at all. But some videos I'll actually slow down to 10% and in my last video, or maybe I'll throw this up on the screen, when I slow it down to 10%, it does have a very little chop, but it's hard to see, so it still looks pretty good, and it's slower than your iPhone. Something else that I really love about this camera is the case. I said it in the features, but to dive a little bit deeper, no pun intended, I know it goes 33 feet underwater, <laughs> but uh, the, the case gives you so much more confidence. Now, I use this for RC cars, I use it for real cars, I do it for like uh, biking or whatever type of active adventure. It, the case gives you that much more confidence that nothing's gonna break on it. Now it's not indestructible, but compared to my GoPro Max, which doesn't have a case, it just has those little protective lenses. I know that if I put this on something and it falls off or something happens, I'm much more confident that this won't break as opposed to my 360 camera. The next thing that I really love about this camera is the GPS feature. Now, I believe they introduced this in the GoPro 5, but by the GoPro 7, they really nailed it down and the GPS works amazing. So I put this on for speed runs or I'll put it on. In my last video, I talked about my GoPro Max and one of the things I didn't like is I couldn't use my GPS feature when I'm doing 360 video. So rather than putting my, my 360 camera on something which is bigger and heavier, I have this smaller camera that does GPS and it does a better job and takes a better video than my 360 camera does. So I love that about this camera. The GPS works amazing. It's flawless every single time. It shows you G's, it shows you a graph about like where you went. So it's really cool and I really like that feature about this camera. And the last thing that I really love about this camera, a benefit is that it is super easy to use. Just like my GoPro uh, Max, it's very easy to use. There's one SD card and the touchscreen works flawlessly. So when you 
hit anything on the touch screen, it's activated really quickly. It feels more like a smartphone, whereas some of the older cameras, they, the, the technology just wasn't there yet. So really impressed with the touch, touch screen technology of this camera. And overall, I think that this is such an easy camera to use. So let's get into the things, some of the things that I don't like about this camera. Now, I want to use the term don't like kind of loosely. I do really like this camera and I'm kind of nitpicking here, but um, one of the main things that does bother me with, with shooting with this camera, and I've been using it for a while now, is the fact that the battery does not last that long. My 360 camera outperforms this any day of the week. It lasts almost twice as long as this camera does um, if I'm not shooting in 360 video. Now, given the battery is definitely a smaller size, I think that they could do better with the battery and making the lifespan a little bit longer because when you're out there and you know you have both batteries charged up you don't always have access to be able to charge them while you're shooting or wherever you are shooting so you need to have an extra battery i'd recommend definitely getting two because these die pretty quickly and then the other thing that i don't like about the camera is sometimes i have issues connecting i don't know whatever what it is with my 360 camera i don't have any issues at all but with this camera if I connect to my 360 camera, then I try and connect to this camera, and I have to shut everything off. I have to close the app down, shut the camera off, turn it back on, and it's just time consuming, especially when you're out there trying to get good videos and the sun's going down. It's just something that you don't want to have to deal with, and I have to constantly deal with that with this camera. So I usually just connect with my phone to this camera, and like the workaround is to connect my phone to this camera and never connect my phone to my 360 camera and just hope that I'm getting that good shot, which with a 360 camera, it's almost impossible not to get the shot, so it ends up working out. So overall, in conclusion, I really recommend this camera. I really love it. I can't imagine going to uh, do what I'm doing on a daily basis without this camera. And the question that gets asked all the time, is this still relevant with the GoPro 8s of the world out there today? It absolutely is. It's a good bang for your buck. In my opinion, it's a better bang for your buck than the GoPro Hero 8. Get it cheaper, get two batteries, get an SD card, and I think it's a great option, especially if you're getting into YouTube for the first time or if you're starting to make videos or if you want to create like family vlogs or anything, it's a great starter camera. It's a great addition to any fleet of cameras that you already may have. So highly recommend it. And like I said, guys, if you're on the fence between this and a GoPro Hero 8, personally, I think I would save the money, get the GoPro Hero 7, shoots just as good video. It's a little bit less stable, but it's still very, very stable. Not taking it away from that at all. So like I said, highly recommend this camera. Really love it. Can't imagine going to a shoot without it. Love the slow motion with it. And that's it for this review, guys. So going to wrap it up here. Thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, so you don't miss out on any other videos like this in the future. Going to be putting up more review videos and beginner review videos. Hopefully simplifying things for you, making you feel a little bit less like I don't want to overwhelm you with information. This is just a basic review. Uh, I could go more in depth if I get a lot of people wanting to. I've, I have the capability of doing that, but for right now, I want to keep it as simple as possible. So again, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.